Kevin Walsh, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me and accommodating my allergic needs here. Absolutely. Hi, Lou. Unfortunately, we, don't, we have a oh. Lou stand-in today, but you know, this she'll have to do here. It's a real shame when you're allergic to your favorite dog I and know. she doesn't understand why. She's just like, why, Kevin? <laughs> As some people may or may not know, you're owner of Evil Bikes. Currently based in Seattle, but working on moving the way up to Bellingham here. We're, uh, we're excited to have you. Thanks. Excited to be here finally. Has it been a long process? I think it's been like two and a half, three years in the making to get that building going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole crew will be up in December. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. It's like to have everyone up here. Got some questions for you. Gonna get to know you a little bit more, but uh, we'll intersperse a hit of Neglin with each question to kind of keep things interesting and test your skills a little bit. Shit. So uh, now that we're started, I'll give you first hit. This is Vitalik all over again. <laughs> all right, you guys ready for some failure? Yes! Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is a moment for me. Oh my God, this is the best. I like this game, ups and downs. Dude, know? I've never hit it before. I actually <laughs> hit this thing, finally. It's only been two years. <laughs> One hit, two years. Uh, you're from the East Coast originally, right? Yep. Massachusetts? Yep. What was growing up there like? Uh, I was pretty cool. I mean, I was definitely like uh, more of a latchkey kid then. There was like the boys club break-offs on Wednesday night. Okay. So I actually used to be able to break dance. Used to? You, used to? you haven't kept up? I don't know, man. I, you know, there might be a backspin or a headspin still in there, but since I was like one of the only people that could kind of draw, like mm -hmm. everybody would have me like do tags for them and be like, right breeze on my, my jacket. <laughs> so I would airbrush it and then like hand paint everything. So it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. It's definitely a different place to grow up, I think, than the West Coast, for sure. Did you have an artist tag name that you'd like do your little signature underneath everything? No, I just used to do K Walsh okay. all the time. Yeah, I never had like a cool pen name or anything like that. Maybe it's you can help me K. with Walsh. that after. Yeah, we'll brainstorm. Uncle Kev. Uncle Kev. There yeah. you go. Excellent, man. You're up. Keep the roll going. Oh my god. This is so much pressure. <sighs> Get a little, be a little belly rub. Ear oh, ear rub. So quiet today. It's, you know. I know. So you mentioned that you raced. BMX. Yep. How'd you get into that? Right before I turned five or something, one of my my best buddies, Kevin McNeil, is a few years older than me. Basically, his parents took me, you know, as a, like kind of as an activity, mm -hmm. and then we just started traveling, you know, doing the NBL tours, you know, up and down the East Coast okay. and stuff. Did you ever podium or anything? Yeah, yeah. I had the ten expert crit plate for a while. And cool. My little sister would knock all my trophies over and break all the wheels <laughs> off. I think it was just fun to like hang out with your buddies and go travel around and I was always just wanted to kind of hit the bigger jumps so mm -hmm. it was for me it was just I'd just go as fast as I could and kind of send it. A few podiums here and there. Cool. Yeah. Sick. All right. You're up. I can't even see this in my age. Oh. Here we go. I'm yeah, practicing. That was, that was good. Damn. Oh. <laughs> Hi buddy. <laughs> This is the point like when I usually walk in where I have to like run in and wash my hands because it's like yeah. the allergies are creeping up my arm. But now you can actually cuddle with her a little bit, you know? I know. It's sad. And then, so where'd you go to school? This technical school in Seattle um, for electrical engineering and computer science. I was working for this company doing like flat panel lighting. I was outside at like lunch skateboarding and uh, playing my harmonica and the boss's buddy like showed up and he's like, Hey man, you're coming to work for me. I'm like, I, but I work for Mark. And I'll never forget it. He took me and he's like, made me smoke a joint with him and front side grind the deep end of the West Seattle Bowl. Is that like your interview? That was like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, okay. The, the best part about it was he, his name's Mike Shaughnessy. He's like really responsible for me playing blues. Cool. When I was playing harmonica at that job, he made me go downtown Seattle and get up and play a blues night. Have you ever like played in public before? No, it was three shades of red, super nervous, and like holding my harmonica, freaking out. I hadn't really played with like a microphone. Basically you get your head cut every week. Mm -hmm. And then finally when you get invited to play with the band, you know, like you're finally like getting good enough. Yeah. So that took a little while. And 
those are like such amazing times in Seattle too. All right, let's play some Nagel then. There you go. Dude, have you been practicing? Dude, I haven't. I swear to God. You were with me at Retallic <laughs> and how I like, I'm a failure at this game. Sorry, man. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna straight mine up. All right, so it seems like art is, has been one of the things that's been with you the longest, along with riding bikes and everything like that. And so was that a big um, segue or reason to start your design firm? Yeah, it's definitely carried through into like I think every endeavor I've had and everything I've done, music, design. And so it was super big, creative, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Is that still around? Uh, yeah, to an extent. I mean, I guess I can go into how yeah. that all came about. Yeah, let's talk about that. I was doing like freelance design, you know, the whole time that I was working at Electronico. I was at K2 one day and I had been working on like some teleski bindings, some snowboard graphics and and what I kind of noticed was, was like people were like working in these silos and I didn't really see anybody thinking about like the 30,000 foot view of like the brand and how it, all the parts interacted. Okay. And I kind of looked and was like, man, all these things kind of go together. And so I had landed um, a snowboard graphic with uh, Sim Snowboards. I ended up doing this uh, board series called The Search. And that was like kind of kicked it off. And in that time, you know, I hadn't owned a business. I had no business owning a business, you know, mm -hmm. um, it continued to grow, um, you know, for 18 years, mm -hmm. it was, it was an awesome experience. And then at that time I had been discussing turning it into a business incubator. We were doing every component, you know, it was brand product and space. We kind of looked and we were like, man, we could do this with our own brands, staff it with the people that we thought would make it successful. And so at that point, you know, that's when evil started. Mm -hmm. And so we were doing iron horse. That's when I met Dave, kind of the instigator. And he's like, hey man, you've always wanted to do this. Why don't you make this your first incubator project? And like when that kind of happened, I wasn't ready. I was like, I'm yeah. not ready to do this. And, and then I was like, fuck it, let's go for it. But that was like really where I had saw super big going. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we started looking and we we're like, man, this would be super, you know, interesting if we could create like 50% of our business that's ours, that we own, that we can control because like design was getting commoditized quite a bit. You know, like I was going into meetings and you know, you'd get a, a CEO or a vice president come to me and they're like, oh, my nephew has Photoshop. And you're like, oh, thanks man. Please. Thanks for reducing my job to a piece of software. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it was about four years ago. I kind of wound it down in the capacity that it was in mm -hmm. and kind of segued it more into my personal consultancy. But yeah, that's kind of how it came to be. Yeah. And, all right. All right, swing it. With what you guys were kind of potentially going for with the incubator, it mm -hmm. worked on kind of the first go. Yeah, it, well, yeah, kind of. You well, know, you know, it's I like, mean, I mean, most people are aware of the uh, tumultuous history we've had. And uh, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you kind of look at that and you're like, man, the positives of that were like, I got this business case, I got, every possible scenario that could happen to any one person <laughs> yeah and yeah it was definitely like crash course in business incubation you know and there's these old fucking silicon valley like you know terms like fail forward and all of that but some of that like you know when you're when you're down on your luck you kind of use those things and you're like yeah. find a little bit of motivation and inspiration through that stuff you know there were moments where i was like oh this is a complete failure and then i looked and said wow I just got like four business degrees out of this. Yeah. You know, that it's it's like experience that I can never replace. And it's definitely plays a big part into like who I am today and what the brand's doing. I wouldn't trade it for the world, you know, as, as much as those years kind of suck to go uh -huh. through. Um, yeah, it was all like a pretty cool learning experience. Absolutely, yeah. experience is invaluable for sure. Yeah. All right, you're up, man. Uh. We can't, we can't be neglecting Lucy here, you know, we gotta All right. make sure she's, Sorry, happy. Lou. she's happy. All right, this one's for Watsy. Oh, you savage. There we go. It's okay, girl, it's just a hammer swing. Yeah, I know she's laying. <laughs> she does do that weird position. Yeah, the in the corner she's when she's like, twerked up against the corner of the couch. All right, I got another, another different one for you. Who's the most famous person you've ever met? Hmm. Belinda Carlisle from the uh, Go-Go's. Okay. 
Or even, or what about like, uh, like an idol to you? you an know, idol someone, to me? That oh, was... oh. Yeah, thanks, man. That's good. Um, Pine Top Perkins. I don't know who that so, is. So, Pine Top Perkins is a piano player from Muddy Waters, okay. Howlin' Wolf, and all that. And I got to play with them and meet him. Sick. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was definitely for me probably like pretty huge. What was the setting? Where'd you meet him? I played with him in Seattle. Never idolized like skaters or BMX riders or anything. I appreciated them. Yeah. And I never really cared about meeting, you know, movie stars or anything. It wouldn't, it just wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. But these dudes were like, they lived through some serious shit and kind of developed a genre of music that's, you know, obviously I'm pretty close to. And, uh, my head was blown, you yeah. know? I was like, man, I needed to walk into this with a helmet on, because <laughs> you just, it's too surreal, right? You're like spinning this vinyl record, listening to this like amazing music that's 50, 60 years old, and then that same guy is telling you a story about how that album got made, Yeah, you know? And uh, that was, yeah, that was nuts. I can't believe I didn't remember that. That's way cool though. I love how I go to the Go-Go's. Yeah, <laughs> the Go-Go's. We yeah, can, we can get that one out if you want us to. No, that's cool, man. <laughs> Belinda Carlisle and, and Jane Weedland were super cool. So, cool. yeah. Wow. Good question. Okay, thanks. All right, time to Fucking time me. to start another roll. How about that? All right, I'm going to try your style. I'm probably going to end up puncturing my leg. Savage. <laughs> oh, you choked up on the grip, too. You can do that, dude. As long as, as, long as you're above the line. Oh, no. oh, another rule I didn't know about. <laughs> oh. What's your go-to trail snack? My go-to trail snack? Yeah. Oh, f This one's easy. So, uh, Haribo gummy bears. Okay. Two bags. And then one bag of uh, Swedish fish. And then um, a bag of Alberto peppered thin. It has to be thin. Beef jerky. Okay. So your sweets guy. And savory, I guess. The line, right? Yeah, as long as you're below that the line. Are we cool? Yeah. Ref, ref. Something's got to give here. All right, well, Kevin, so I know recently you've shown me some videos of you driving rally cars. Yeah. Uh, how long you been doing that for? I've been racing for like a year and a half now. Okay. First of all, it was like a childhood dream to do. Okay. So for the past eight years, like I wasn't getting paid from evil and and I was like, man, this is kind of a cool way to be, kind of come back and be get rewarded a little bit. Mm -hmm. Picked up rally cars and glass blowing. Yeah, I know, it's weird. But uh, yeah, so the rally car thing, I talked Brent Atkinson into going to Dirtfish with okay. me. And we went and did a three day all wheel drive class. Basically like right after that happened, I'm taking the advanced class and Brent's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and um, so then, uh, I buy my car basically with minimal instruction, like go out and do the Oregon rally. And we finished. It was amazing. It was like the coolest experience ever. You can kind of drive like a dick in the city, but nothing compares to like driving it like you stole it off road. Yeah. You know, and you certainly can't just go do that without training, you know? It was like going to Dirtfish was like invaluable training. And they've been like amazing throughout the whole process of like making sure I don't kill myself. It's definitely, I can tell what addiction's like. You get high from it, and then you're like craving it the whole time you don't do it, mm -hmm. you know? And you mentioned glass blowing. It seems like mm -hmm. perfectly contradictory yeah, totally. hobby, you know? Yeah, um, so that goes back 20 years. So my, my really good buddy, Scott Darlington, we used to race uh, downhill together. He was coming down to pick up his new bike, and he's like, Kev, it's been 20 years, man. So I start going in once a week and learning, and uh, it'd be the equivalent of like Brandon Semenak teaching you how to ride a bike. Yeah. You know? So it's it's scary, you know, like yeah. you're intimidated, but they're like all so welcoming and totally immersed in it. Like it's like my new favorite thing to do. Cool. You know, so if I'm not like in the rally car, I want to be blowing glass. It's good to have those. I think those other creative outlets, starting from scratch and trying to apply the way you think and the way you learn and apply it to something new is, I, I think, is really gratifying. It's, it's been a cool year. It's kind of just, you know, you reclaim a little bit of yeah. your life back and get creative again. So yeah, it's been pretty awesome to do that. Cool, glad to hear that. Not the one. This is the most infuriating game ever. What the f 
Are you serious? This is like having a trail in your backyard and then you invite somebody over and you're like, hey man, follow me. Follow me. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I'm, I like that it's a little bit infuriating for you. I'm going to slay on you so hard next time we run. I'm probably not because now I'm old. <laughs> All right. So with running a bike company, how do you keep things fresh as far as the trajectory you're headed in? Mm -hmm. You know, I think you should look outside of your industry on how to keep things fresh. And I also think it kind of comes from within as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like all our silly ideas, uh, silly names, all of that stuff is either, you know, happens over drinks or on the trail or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. We never look and go, oh, there's this cool business opportunity. Let's go make this. Mm -hmm. It's more about like, I wonder if we could make something that would be super fun that would do this. Mm -hmm. And if we can, and it kind of like, fits the brand and it fits our style and it's something that we want to ride, then we would make it. And I always look for inspiration personally, like way outside of the industry. Mm -hmm. Like it comes from weird spots. Like last night when I came in today, you know, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do a series of CrossFit shirts <laughs> just because that CrossFit stuff kind of like cracks me up sometimes, yeah. you know, you know, they're like, I want to be the best at exercising and well, I want to make shirts that say, I want to be the best at exercise. So I don't know. It's like silly things that come up. And I think part of it too is like, I don't have to answer to anybody. We just do whatever we want, whatever is kind of silly and fun. And, and I think that kind of keeps it light and fresh, you know, you know, obviously it's a business too. So we like got a balance, but just on a little, little tangent here, you told us about wanting to name the suspension up and down. Up and down. I always thought was so awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't think everybody thinks it's as funny as I do, but man, <laughs> Delta is stupid, you know. And Dave's like, that's just the way it is. It's my third suspension system. It's Delta, and I was like, all right, it's yours. Oh, so he had already chosen that name. He yeah, because like, we were coming up with Delta. names, and we, yeah, Dave and I, always like go off on silly tangents, you know. Zeb was always good at coming up with acronyms, and he's like, what about Dave's extra legitimate travel apparatus? And I'm like, boom! <laughs> I'm like, I texted Dave, and Dave's like, oh yeah, you got to run that. Yeah. So like, I think that's kind of interesting for people to know is like, I mean, that's how that happened. You know, that was like on the fly Yeah. and then it was done. Yeah. You know, so there's not like crazy focus groups or anything nuts like that. It's like, you know, it just, it, a lot of that stuff happens on the fly. So yeah. So. Uh, straightened it. All right, well, Kevin, uh, thanks for your time. I had a pleasure asking you some questions. Good to hear some stories. Is there is there anything you want to leave our audience with uh, to close it, to close this out? Like words of wisdom and stuff. Yeah. Oh man. All right. I don't know. I I think at least from my personal experiences is like, don't let people tell you you can't do things. You can do literally anything you put your mind to, and uh, I firmly believe that. Yeah, and just go for it. Excellent. Yeah, we've heard your stories today, so they're inspiring to say the least. And uh, we're psyched Evil Bikes is where it is and coming to Bellingham. I want to thank all of our customers that have stood by us throughout the years. I mean that sincerely, like all you guys that put up with the two week emails and all the bullshit that went down for so many years. All right, well, Kevin, thanks, man. Thanks, really buddy. appreciate it. And, right on, uh, you guys. Yeah, stoked. Yes. And, yeah, we'll finish. Oh. <laughs> you can't even hit it with the At rod. Least.